Hi, my name is Dr. Michael Corey, and I want to welcome you to Functional Toxicology. Today we're going to be talking about a case in which a gentleman has lost a lot of his health. And we're going to be talking about what the results are utilizing FCT and bioresonance testing and treatments. Bioresonance testing. Well, what is it? It's a way of looking at your body, not from a chemical one, but from a, a frequency, from a, a vibration that your body works at. No different than your heart does when it stops and the doctors put the paddles on your heart and give you a frequency to jumpstart that heart again. Well, our bodies are put under a lot of stress on a day-to-day -day basis and especially over time. You know, part of the aging process is, is your body's inability to regulate itself anymore. Well, this is happening to younger and younger people. We have everything from the dementias and the chronic illness and the autoimmunities and we have to ask ourselves why. Well, I want you to understand it. When we have things like this toxic soup that we live in. And we're talking about heavy metals like mercury, thallium, lead, yeast, mold, fungus, bacteria, viruses, herbicides, pesticides, parasites, xenobiotics like fire retardants, uh, over-the-counter prescription medication residues. What does your body do when it can't get rid of all of this stuff? Well, it's gonna to go to the lymphatic system. Anything your body can't get rid of, the last resort is gonna store. It's gonna store it in your tissues. So this is where bioresonance testing comes in because we're not looking at your body from a chemical one. We're looking at it, at it from a frequency standpoint. With the specialized bioresonance testing that we do, we do it hands-on, we do it from an individual to individual standpoint. And we look within your tissues to find out what you have hiding in there. And what's hiding in there very often is the block between recovery and continued illness and progression of a disease process. So. I want to introduce you to this case study, and this is a 69-year-old male. Chief health concerns were autoimmune compromise. We have cancer. We've got burning, numbness, tingling, increased sensitivity in the feet, in the thighs, and in, in the legs. We've got eye and facial swelling. We've got body temperature fluctuations. We've got fatigue. He just couldn't have any energy to get up and get going. And we have urinary frequency. Every 20 minutes, he had to go to the restroom every 20 minutes. And all of you people out there with bladder issues, you're going to appreciate that because you, uh, nobody knows what you're going through, having to evacuate every 20 minutes. Within the first protocol of testing, what we found is we found that some tissues were compromised. Now your lymphatic system is your body's filtration system, regulating and filtering that blood out and keeping the good stuff in there and the bad stuff out, the toxins, the bacteria, the virus, so your body can expel it. So we had problems with the lymphatic system in this individual. We have large intestinal mucosa. This is where our immune system is. Our immune system is said to be the second brain. Well, when that intestinal system is clogged up and it's full of junk and it's got pesticides, herbicide res residues, it's got heavy metals in there, it's got fungus and bacteria, uh, it cannot work properly. It cannot give the energy and the nutrients to the body to build ATP to get you energy so your body can function properly and run properly. We also found compromise within the thymus, the immune gland, the glial cells, the prostate, kidney, the liver, the hypothalamus, the white blood cells. That's what carries all of the, the neutrophils, eosinophils, uh, the monocytes. All of these things are carried within the white blood cells to help you with your immune function. Uh, mesenchyme, your gyrus singularis in the brain and also in the spleen. So all these tissues were actually compromised as a result of the toxic burden that was placed on it. Next I'm going to show you that within that first testing we found that we have trichophytes and uh, mintographites and this is a fungus causing skin uh, disease in people and animals. It's transmitted through contact of infected persons or animals or blankets, towels, combs, brushes, linens, so it can be transmitted. We found malathion, which is insecticide per, uh, organophosphate, and it controls fleas. It's used for flea control with pets, uh, and it's also used in agriculture, agriculture to, uh, to knock down things like mosquito problems. We also have pesticides, and these are poisons that can harm more than just the pests themselves. What we see is that they're toxic and they cause serious illness and diseases from respiratory issues to cancer. We found benzene in this individual. Benzene can cause drowsiness, can cause nausea, irregular heartbeat, headaches, tremors, confusion, seizures, and death. Uh, it's found in gasoline, it's found in plastics, it's found in rubbers, it's found in 
uh, lubricants, detergents, drugs, and pesticides. These were in this individual's body. Arsenic metallica uh, can play a role in the development of diabetes, cancer, vascular, and lung disease. It's found in groundwater, increased risk of skin, bladder, and lung cancers. So this is nasty, nasty stuff, and you're going to see that if you pull up uh, reports from the EPA, you're going to see that some of these things are in groundwater, you're going to see them are in insecticides. We're going to see that our environment is a toxic soup, as I mentioned. We found that this individual had lead, and there's no obvious symptoms when we look at lead if it's given over a long period of time, but after long time exposure at lower levels, we can see long term exposure will produce permanent brain damage, anemia, hearing problems, reproductive system damage for both men and women, kidney disease, seizures, and coma. This is nothing to be messed around with, and unfortunately, medicine doesn't have an answer for, for toxicity in our environment from medications to all these other uh, exposure risks that we live with. The second protocol that we gave this individual, we'll see that we found he had, had influenza A, and that's gonna give him the body aches, it's gonna give him the fatigue, it's gonna give him the fever. Uh, so vomit, vomiting and diarrhea. We found flukes, parasitic flatworms, and they infect the intestinal tract and the liver, and it can cause malabsorption, abdominal pain, fever, nausea, hives, vomiting, diarrhea, and decreased appetite and weight loss. Perfect scenario for a cancer patient, you know? I mean, we want to keep the weight on. Looks like flukes can be something that we might want to always look at with a cancer patient. Uh, carbocaine, this is a local anesthetic. It's a numbing agent, and it's used with epidurals and spinal blocks. This can cause painful, difficult urination, fast heart rate, numbness, tingling, ringing in the ears, blurred vision, confusion, drowsiness, uh, slow heart rate, loss of feeling in the stomach, groin and genitals. How, you know, there's numbness. You don't want this in your stomach and your genitals and, and in the groin. Weakness and loss of movement in the legs and feet. And this is where peripheral neuropathy comes in. We're looking at how do we get rid of numbness and tingling in the feet of a patient with peripheral neuropathy. Well, carbocanes are one thing that we want to look at with a peripheral neuropathy patient because of the numbing effect that it has in these areas. Malathion, once again, on the second protocol, uh, dropped down to a lower level, not, not as severe as the first time, but once again, these are organophosphates, it's insecticides, widely used in agriculture, landscaping, uh, recreational areas for mosquito eradication. Um, they're spraying neighborhoods with this stuff, and especially here in California when we have mosquito problems, Florida with mosquito problems. So, you know, it might not be under your own wishes that you're having this exposure, but you are being exposed. The World Health Organization regarding malathion states that it's a pro probable carcinogenic, uh, carcinogen in 2015. Systemic toxicity may cause symptoms of headache, nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, muscle weakness, twitching, uh, slurred speech, uh, and shortness of breath. Very, very important to look at the symptoms of what you're experiencing and looking at what can cause it. That's my, that's my forte, is looking for the underlying causes of chronic disease. And bioresonance testing is a great way to identify these toxins. Flukes, the parasitic uh, flatworm that I just talked to you about, causes malabsorption, abdominal pain, fever, nausea, and so forth. And pesticides, we went over the pesticides with it. But at the end of getting remedies for those two protocols, this patient experienced 75% decrease in the swelling of the eye orbit and sinus in the face. Improvement in the body temperature regulation. Improvement in vision. Decreasing emotional stress and increased energy. Better deep sleep. Sleeping beyond four hours is vital for your circadian rhythms and for you to have replenishment of nutrients and to be able to heal. Decreased urinary frequency from every 20 minutes is decreased to every two hours. And he was really uh, blessed and happy with that finding. Decreased tingling in the feet, legs, and thighs. So I want you to understand that, you know, it's not necessarily something you have to put in your system. Why don't we look at taking out the toxins instead? Because it's vital that we look at this toxic soup and what toxic, what's interfering with your optimum health? Are you exposed to the heavy metals? Do you have the silver amalgams in your teeth? That your doctor and dentist have put in there for the last 20, 30, 40 years. Do we have infections underneath the root canals or underneath the caps? Do we have exposure to the lead, the heavy metals, the mercury? Um, have we had been 
um, infiltrated with insecticides, pesticides? Do you live in a house that has mold? These are very, very important questions that many doctors never ask their patients. So if you're living in a toxic soup and you suspect that this is part of your chronic health condition, and even if you don't, it's worthwhile for you to have some testing done and to find out exactly what's going on in there. Bioresonance testing through FCT is the primary way, the beneficial way, and the best way to be able to help your body decrease the toxic burden. So let's get out of the toxic soup. If you wanna decrease the toxic burden and regain your health, you can call my office, uh, schedule your complimentary, absolutely no charge. I'd like to talk to you, we'll discuss your history, we'll discuss your condition, and you can contact us at 714-730-5833. That's once again, 714-730-5833. Or else you can go to drmichaelcorey.com. And my name is Dr. Michael Corey. It's been my pleasure bringing you this special case. Have a great day and I wish you well.